Good morning, and welcome to worship here at Zion Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Sonia Pankos, and it's a joy to have you here in worship with us today. If you are joining us from Zoom, you may note that um, we are trying something a little bit different. Last week, things were a little bit blurry, and so we've been doing some modifications throughout the week. And so you may find that when you joined on today, you had a gallery view, so you got to see a whole bunch of different little squares. Um, we would recommend that if you would like to see the worship on your full screen, just go up to the top right-hand corner. You can click on view, and you'll either want speaker view or full gallery or full screen so that you can see me on your whole screen. So um, just a recommendation if you uh, came into Zoom and it looked a little bit different today than it has in the past. We continue in this season focusing on the Gospel of Mark and diving deeply into that very first chapter of Mark to give us a strong foundation of Jesus' identity before we continue our reading through the rest of Mark throughout up until Easter. And today we're going to focus on hearing the story of Jesus and his authority. We continue to receive offerings for the work of the church here at Zion in our community and in our world. And you can give um, online at www.zionloveland.com on the Give tab or mail your offerings into the church office. As we gather in worship, I invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our sins before God and one another. We come together to worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We hear in 1 John that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whose voice is this that is over? Joy. The voice of the Lord is calling his children. 
Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know that your Son, Jesus Christ, is our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, good morning and welcome to our Kids in Christ time. Um, I invite you to join me in marking ourselves with the sign of the cross. God be in my head, God be in my heart, God be on my left, and God be on my right. So in our Bible story today, we have Jesus teaching in the synagogue. And um, there is a man who comes in and it, the Bible says that this man has an unclean spirit. Um, so you can maybe think of it as his spirit is a little bit messy um, at the moment. And there's a picture up here of um, our kids' room, and they're trying to maybe make some organization out of the chaos. But the room is really, really messy. Um, and just like the man who enters the synagogue, um, sometimes we can feel like when we have a big mess in our life, whether it's our room or something else we have going on, um, it would be really easy to just like shut the door and pretend that that mess doesn't exist or to tell that man to leave the synagogue, you don't belong here, you're too messy um, today to come in and join us here for worship and learning. Um, but that's not what happens in this story. Instead of telling the man to go away or instead of shutting the door and pretending the room doesn't exist, Jesus um, offers healing and cleaning. And Jesus doesn't just say, oh, you have to actually clean up your mess before you can even come into worship. Jesus says, hey, it's okay. We can, we can deal with this mess. We can work through this mess. Let's do it together. Um, so Jesus heals the man um, and Jesus comes to us in all of our mess, whether it's maybe a messy room that we happen to be experiencing this week because we forgot to put all of our toys away after playtime, or maybe it's another type of mess in your life. No matter what it is, we all have a mess of one sort of another, um, but Jesus comes to us in the midst of our mess and says, hey, let's work on this together, and I'm gonna come to you. You don't need to to figure out your mess, to clean it all up, to have a perfect, shiny, sparkly space um, in your life or in your room or in your heart before you come to me. You don't need all of those things. You don't have to have this checklist of perfectly clean um, life before you can come and follow me and before I can teach you and lead you. And so we get to celebrate that today, that God um, comes, sends Jesus to us to clean, help us clean up our mess um, and invites us into ministry right where we are. Um, we don't have to make sure that we're perfect before, before we show up um, at Jesus' feet to learn and to grow. So let's go ahead and pray to celebrate that, and then we'll keep working on our memory verse. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus who comes to us in the midst of our mess. Amen. All right, so we've learned our whole verse um, from Mark 1.15 so far. We're going to keep working on this until Easter, um, but there's a lot of signs crammed into just um, this one sentence. So we'll be working each week about um, doing it a little bit faster and a little bit more smoothly. So let's practice together. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Let's do that one more time all together. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Great job with that. Thank you so much for joining us today.
gospel reading for today comes from the first chapter of Mark, continuing in that first chapter. Today we're going to start at the 21st verse. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were amazed, and they kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Many of you know that our family is quite the Harry Potter fan club. We've loved Harry Potter ever since we started reading it out loud to my kids when they were probably about first grade. And as soon as we started reading it out loud, Sophia, who could read at that time, was hooked. She didn't want to wait until the next night when we would read the story again together out loud, and so she would sneak the book so that she could read what was going to happen next, since she couldn't wait to find out. Well, we have come to love the book very much, the whole series, and our daughter Hannah has read all seven books in the series so many times it's beyond what we can count. We sort of lost count at about 37 times that she's read all seven of these books. And even now, the girls will both regularly go back and read the stories again. A few years ago, we were able to fulfill our dream vacation and go to the Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, to the wizarding world of Harry Potter. And it truly was everything we had hoped for. Now, some people are concerned because the Harry Potter series has witches and wizards and spells in it. But what I've found is when you read really great books by amazing and creative authors, that the setting is actually less important than the deeper story they're trying to tell. When you finish a great book, it'll just stay with you and you'll keep thinking about it. Sometimes you want to go back and reread it because you just wonder, maybe there's something that you missed. Well, in the Harry Potter series, the author J.K. Rowling points to a number of deeper truths throughout this book series. Here are just a few of the ones that have come up in our family that we've discussed one of them is that we do all we can to try and defy death. But really, death is just the next great adventure. Another one. Love is the greatest power. And self-sacrificing love can conquer evil and even death. We cannot do it alone. We need our friends. And finally... Things are not always what they seem. People are much more complex than we ever imagined. And so we are to love and accept each other in the midst of all our uniquenesses. Sound like some familiar themes maybe you heard from another great book before? Yeah. It's true, J.K. Rowling is a practicing Christian, and she interwove many religious themes and parallels all throughout her stories. She even has interspersed a number of quotes from the Bible all throughout her stories. But you really have to be savvy and know your scriptures, because she's not going to give you the chapter and the verse to find it. You'll have to know your Bible. Now, just a little side note. Some of you are like, wow, those are really long books, Pastor Sonia. So, but it's okay, I watch the movies. Let me let you in on a little secret. The books are way better. It always seems to be the case, I think, that books are better than movies. You can truly see the intricacies that come through in the writing. 
And J.K. Rowling, she weaves a story with so many different levels that can be appreciated. She authors a whole new world in which deeper truths can be told. The definition of an author is a person who begins or creates something new. It comes actually from the Latin root, octor, meaning originator or promoter or leader. Interestingly, this word author has the same Latin root as the word authority. We don't often think of those two words as being similar, author and authority. But now that I said it, you're like, oh yeah, they do kind of start exactly the same there. So we see here that in both of these, a true authority is one who is an originator, a promoter, and a leader, just like I said, for an author as well. And so today in our scriptures, we hear this word authority used multiple times to describe Jesus. It begins with Jesus teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. And as Jesus was teaching, it tells us that those who were gathered were astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Jesus' authority appears to be different from the authority the scribes have. There's something different about this Jesus. Now, we don't exactly know what it is. We weren't there. But we have been around people who have a different sense of authority around them. Oftentimes, it's a presence about them, maybe an authenticity. We find that there's an authority that they bring. Now, we here have been reading the story of Jesus from the very beginning here of Mark, beginning of chapter 1. And so we know where this authority comes from, where this being, this sense, this presence. It actually begins when Jesus is filled with the Spirit at his baptism. It tells us that the Spirit of God descended on him like a dove. And so this authority that Jesus brings is God's spirit, God's very presence in their midst. We know that this is to be true because we've been hearing this in this memory verse that we've been starting to memorize and will continue to memorize all the way through Easter. It tells us that Jesus' first words that he begins to speak says, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Kingdom of God has come near in Jesus. Jesus' very presence, it's a glimpse of God's kingdom. And so we see here in this glimpse that God has come down and reveals to us that God desires to bring healing and wholeness to us all. And so Jesus brings this authority teaches with this authority, this authority of God's spirit. And he's filled with the presence that people just cannot resist. We just heard last week, you know, men leave their boats when Jesus says, come, follow me. It's an authority that Jesus has, the kingdom of God. Come near. Jesus teaches with this very same authority. But it's not just enough that Jesus teaches with this authority. When the kingdom of God comes near, Jesus authors in a whole new story. That day there in the synagogue, there was a man with an unclean spirit. This unclean spirit cries out to Jesus. And Jesus, with the very word, says, be silent. Come out of him. And immediately, the unclean spirit comes out. Jesus has so much authority that just with the word, he can command them to come out. And in doing so, he authors a new life for the man who had an unclean spirit. Before, he was an outcast, unclean. But now, he is integrated back into community. He has a new way of life and being, wholeness and healing. This is the authority that Jesus has, an authority to change lives. Because when the kingdom of God comes near, Everything changes. And those who are around Jesus recognize this. They say, it says that they were amazed at what they saw. And they kept on asking each other, what is this? 
a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. The kingdom of God coming near in Jesus, and Jesus' authority changes lives. Jesus has authority over everything, even the unclean. Jesus' very public act, his first public act, is to bring new life and freedom to a man with an unclean spirit, coming to show us that Jesus has power over sin, over evil, and ultimately, as the story unfolds, we'll find out that Jesus even has power over death. God in Christ comes and stands against all the forces that keep people down. God is opposed to anything that robs us of abundant life. And God is prepared to do battle against all that seeks to rob you of joy and purpose and meaning. The kingdom of God has come near to you to author a new life for you here and now. Now, Jesus' first public act, it didn't change the whole world on that day. But it changed that man's life, changed it forever. Jesus comes and changes hearts and lives one person at a time. The kingdom of God coming near to bring you abundant life. But, but this is not the end of the story that day that this one man was healed. But there was many who were impacted by this changed life. It tells us that the people were amazed Jesus' authority. and tells us that his fame began to spread through the entire region of Galilee. One life changed begins to impact a whole region and eventually will change the world. As we find our lives transformed by the kingdom of God coming near to us, we find that we're also invited to bring them the kingdom of God near to others. We each have different authority in our own lives, and we're called to use that authority to bring abundant life for others. Because God doesn't only desire abundant life just for me. God desires it for all of God's children. And so we have authority in our lives, authority to bring words of kindness, love, and support to those we care about, those maybe who are isolated or grieving, full of self-doubt or in need of a loving word in their life. We have authority to be generous, to share with others who have great need. We have authority to use our voice and our presence to stand up to those places that rob others of abundant life, to stand up against abuse and discrimination against addiction, against loss of employment and unsafe working conditions. God calls us to use our authority as individuals and corporately as the body of Christ to address all of those places that seek to rob others of abundant life. We are called to bring the kingdom of God near to others because God's presence has filled us. And so by our very presence, we can bring the kingdom of God to others through our words and actions. God comes near in Jesus to author a new life, a new life for you that frees you from all that robs you of joy and purpose and meaning. And God calls us to stand against those forces that rob others of abundant life. We use our authority to change one life, one person at a time. Jesus authored in a new life for that man with the unclean spirit. And yet this single act of resistance changed that man's life for the better and impacted a whole region. Jesus comes with authority and uses his words and actions to bring God's presence, God's kingdom near to you, to bring you abundant life and to bring abundant life for all. Thanks be to God. Amen.
join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We offer up prayers for our church, for the world, and for all people in need. Let us pray. Faithful God, we praise you for sustaining the church during this difficult time. We pray that you would give all preachers and teachers the power of your prophetic spirit, that their words will proclaim comfort and the challenge of Christ. We ask your presence at our annual meeting later today that your spirit would lead and guide our conversations so that we will follow you in all that we do. We ask that your spirit would lead and guide the music and worship search team here at Zion and that you would open the heart of the candidate who you're calling to apply for this position. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bountiful God, we praise you for continuing creating the earth and nourishing its creatures. We pray that you would restore our lands and waters that have been harmed by misuse and help us to care for this world you have given to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ruling God, we pray that you will give wisdom to our elected and appointed officials, to political parties, and to grassroots organizers, that in all things they endeavor to serve the common good. Guide our nation out of, way, out of the ways of prejudice and into equality and justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we praise you for each day of health and well-being, and we pray for all who are sick or suffering. Comfort those with mental illness or emotional distress, those institutionalized or living on the streets. We ask your healing presence for those we now name before you. Cindy, Jean Elder's mom, recovering from surgery, Jean Gall, Pastor Sonia's mom, who continues to experience dizziness from a fall on her ice in the ice in early January. Chelsea, as she struggles with an infection. Chelsea is the younger sister of Amanda, who has recently been coming to Zion's in-person worship. Judy Wass, recovering at home from a hospitalization. Jack Allen, awaiting a hip replacement in March. Dean Steiny, in rehab in Lafayette. Marion. Phyllis Zimmerman's sister recovering from a massive stroke. Kyle Knudsen, who is healing through hyperbaric treatments. And Becky, sister of Angie Elder, for strength as she struggles with ALS. We ask your healing presence on all of those who have cancer. Del Milbreth, Mary Harris, Blake Fisher, Deb Steiny's mother, Glenda, Bonnie Showalter's mom, 
Linnea, friend of Deborah Price and Marvin Huth, and Jim, brother of DJ Jurgensen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for the development of the COVID-19 vaccines. We pray for their fair and prompt distribution. Increase in our land a commitment to limit contagion to others. Visit all who have contracted the coronavirus and all who are experiencing the long-term impacts of COVID-19. Strengthen medical workers and home health aides. Receive our prayers of healing for those we now name. Steve Hemphill, friend of Kathy and Elliot Pancoast. Dave and Stacy Sloan, friends of the Jonkisses. Stacy Co Sandy Consman, friend of the McCanns and Tunzevics. Dixie and Steve, Matt Moore's aunt and uncle. Gordon, Joy and Judy, friends of the Lokens. Kevin, Wendy and Josh Horst. Jared, Cooper and his parents. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are experiencing transitions in their life that God would lead and guide them. We pray for Don Mai, who will be moving to Morris, Illinois, to be with his wife, Risa, who moved there last June to take a position as executive director at the public library in Morris. We pray for Madeline and Jeff Fairfax as they prepare for the birth of their new baby later in February. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We rejoice in the gift of your spirit that comes to us in our baptism and fills us with your presence. We pray for those who are celebrating baptismal birthdays this week, including Dennis Keel, Glenn Schreiner, Janine Johnson, Mike Sloan, and Debbie Junkus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal gods, we praise you for your servants of time past whose words and actions have inspired our lives, and we pray that you would be with those who are grieving the death of loved ones. Andrea Dimmitt at the death of her mother, Barbara, the Teasdale and Lowe family at the death of their aunt, Donna, and the family and friends of Bob Consum, including their friends, the McCanns and Tunvix, as Bob died of COVID-19. Unite us with all our beloved dead, now through our memories and at the end of time in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your loving care for the sake of the one who dwells among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We pray as our Lord Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I invite Madeline and Jeff Fairfax to come up. Some of you might have noticed that Madeline is going to be having a baby pretty soon, and we are super excited about that. <laughs> Madeline will begin quarantining at home starting tomorrow in preparation for the birth, and she'll be working from home during that time. So um, from now until whenever baby Fairfax decides to come, you can email Madeline, you can call or text her, or you can contact the church office and leave a message if you need to get a hold of her. Um, but she will continue working as she prepares until the baby comes. Once the baby is born, we will share with the congregation about the birth. We're super excited about it. And you can send Maddie and Jeff your uh, congratulations. Um, you can do that through phone calls, texts, or mail something to them. Um, during that time, you can send those. But we do ask that you would not send any work-related questions at that time. Madeline will be taking a 10-week parental leave, and during that time, we want her to focus on their new baby and their new life. And so any work-related questions, you can send to her email. Pastor Joel will be checking her email, or you can contact the church office if you have any questions about faith formation. So we will continue to, uh, faith formation will continue on. Um, Madeline's done a great job preparing for that. Um, but just please do not reach out to Madeline with any of those questions and honor her her parental leave time, which will begin 10 weeks after, until 10 weeks after the baby's birth. 
And so we want to lift up our prayers and our blessings for Madeline and Jeff at this time. Let us pray. Lord God, you are the creator of all that exists. We thank you for the joy of watching new life begin, for the privilege of sharing with you in continuing creation. We ask that you would graciously preserve and protect Madeline during childbirth and safely bring forth in health and wholeness the infant whom you have created. We ask your blessing on Madeline, Jeff, and baby Fairfax, that your spirit will lead and guide them each day of their life. We pray this through Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and Lord. Amen. We have uh, a few small gifts for Madeline. Some are wrapped up, so she's going to have to open those later. But um, we decided that she needed to have a little bit of noisemakers to remember us um, here in worship. So uh, when Sundays are going on or even other times, so one of them you can bring. She has, we got her a, a little uh, toy piano, which plays a really annoying song. Because that's what you want to give people with babies and little kids is annoying, loud instruments. Just letting you know, anyone. Um, so we want to help them remember. Remember that we're still here and not forget us in those 10 weeks. Don't call them, but you know, they'll still be thinking of us. So we rejoice and we are so excited for you guys. And we're sending you virtual hugs. So thank you and blessings. We're so excited. We can't wait to meet baby Fairfax. We rejoice that you have been able to join us in worship today. And we also would like to give thanks to Carrie Hansen, who has been with us throughout the month of January. She has shared her gift with us. And then in this coming month, in February, we are going to have Michael Davison with us and during our contemporary service. So we do ask that you would keep in prayer our music and worship search team. They have begun to meet and have already received a number of applications. The applications are being accepted through the middle of February, but the team is going to begin interviews, hopefully this week even, for many of those applications that have already come in. So we ask your prayers for that team as they begin to discern who God is calling to this ministry, and prayers for whoever that candidate or that person is, that God would open their heart um, to come and to join our music ministry here at Zion. During this time of virtual worship, we invite you to mail in your offerings to the church office or you can give electronically at www.zionloveland.com and go to the Give tab. Um, you'll also know on that Give tab, uh, we are continuing this week to receive money for Sky Ranch camperships. Last week we had our Sky Ranch Sunday, but if you would like to give money to help kids go to camp, you can mail in a check to the church office and just note in the memo line, um, Sky Ranch camperships, or you can also give online electronically, and there's um, kind of further down, it says Sky Ranch, and all the money that will go there goes towards those camperships. So you can give either way to those Sky Ranch camperships. This week, our middle school girls and boys will be meeting in their two separate groups on Tuesday at 7. Girl Talk and Man Cave will be meeting this coming Tuesday. We invite you to continue to stay on this Zoom call at 1130. We will begin our annual meeting. Those of you who are here, you can rush home if you would like to get home to the, uh, join onto Zoom for our annual meeting at 1130 today. Um, and so during that time, we will be voting on the 2021 budget, also electing officers, reflecting on the 2020 ministry, and looking forward to 2021. And it will be on this same worship link at 1130. The newsletter deadline is February 1st. That's tomorrow. So if you have any articles or things you would like included, you can send those to publications at zionloveland.com. On Saturday, February 13th, Nourish will meet at 8.30 on Zoom. It's a ministry to feed the body, feed the mind, and feed the soul. So all are invited to join on that um, Saturday, February 13th. 
If you can believe it, Lent is just around the corner, so I'm gonna share with you a few of our Lenten plans so that you can begin to plan accordingly. On Ash Wednesday, February 17th, we will have two worship services available. We'll have a noon service, which will be a drive-in service that will be taking place at King of Glory. That's gonna be our joint service. I'll be preaching, but it will be taking place at King of Glory. And then in the evening, we will have a seven o'clock Zoom service. Um, as you're probably aware, Ash Wednesday is pretty special for us to be able to have, be able to mark ourselves with those ashes on Ash Wednesday. And to that end, we have created ashes to go and Lent in a bag. So you can come by on Sunday the 14th um, after each church service uh, at 9.30 or 11.30. Come on drive through and we can get you um, ashes to go. Also, we have a devotional for you because we're going to continue that reading through Mark all the way till the end of Mark. 16, and um, it's going to have the daily readings as well. So we invite you to come and pick all of those up right after church on the 13th. But if you can't pick it up then, you can contact the church office. We'll make sure that you get them in time for Ash Wednesday. Our midweek Lenten worship will begin the following Wednesday, February 24th, and that will be from 6.30 to 7.30. It will be hold an evening prayer. We'll also have time for small group conversation. So we invite you to mark your calendars each Wednesday throughout the season of Lent. If you have already received your stimulus check, we invite you, if you are not in need of it, to share that check with others. If you are in need of it, we rejoice that you have been able to receive that money to help you. And if you um, are not in need of it, there are a number of great local organizations and also wonderful global organizations that can really help to make a difference in the lives of others who are truly being impacted by this pandemic. We send out the list uh, in our Eon Zion, or you can contact the church office if you would like a suggestion of where to donate those. As we are aware, many are being impacted both emotionally and financially throughout this time. If you or your loved ones or friends are in need of support, please let us know so that we can care for each other. It has been a blessing to worship with you. I invite you to stand as you are able and receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
the Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world with you. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 